and welcome to Third and Long, Australia's new podcast series providing you a 360 degree access all areas past to all things in the NFL. Third and Long is brought to you by Little Birdie TV and topsport.com.au and the man that runs that metropolis in Melbourne. I welcome Mark Goodwell. Big win for the Pats again. Yeah, hello, Corey. How are you, fans? Uh, yep, four in a row now, Corey. It's, it's how we lead the show off at the moment, isn't it? It's a bit crazy. Uh, another another crazy week in, in the NFL, lots of upsets, and uh, the defences continue to dominate with uh, the totals dominating the under as well. So uh, lots to talk about this week. There is lots to talk about, and I'll be very interested to see how this man performed on his NFL punting this week. A big welcome to Top Rope. More importantly, Top Rope, are you getting lots of rest? Uh, no, I'm definitely not getting lots of rest, but uh, <laughs> I will I will thank Harry for, young Harry for getting me up for our red zone. Uh each and every day, so I'm, I'm ready to roll at 5 a.m. every day. So uh, if we could, if we can start spreading out some of these NFL games, it would help. Yes, it does. And uh, look, it's been another huge week in football, and we'll go to all the news from the week ten of the NFL season. And boys, for me, I thought one of the big stories to come out of this round. It seemed like to me the Kansas City Chiefs are finally. We've been waiting for a number of weeks where they would get rolling. They only snuck over the line against the Giants and uh, also the Packers, but against Las Vegas, so a hell of a lot more convincing. What were your uh, thoughts on a top rope? Yeah, I'm not convinced. I'm still not convinced about Kansas City here. I thought. Oh, well, so. you poo pooed that. Oh, here's me build them up, and you've just kept yeah. them straight in the plums, top rope. Straight in the plums. <laughs> uh, teams have been playing. Uh, teams have been playing too high uh, shells against Kansas City. They've just taken away the long ball. The the Raiders just refused to do that. The Raiders kept trying, trying to play uh, their, their normal defense. It was pretty much exposed by by Mahomes and Andy Reid. Uh, and the game was pretty close until Deshaun Jackson, whatever the hell Deshaun Jackson was doing, running running the opposite way to, to make contact when you know one of the fastest players in the game had a had a free run at the at the, uh, at the end zone to, to tie the scores. So uh, look, it was good to get away. It, it, it could be the spark to kind of bring some momentum back, but I'm. I'm not wholly convinced about Kansas City yet, and we'll kind of get to that later on, but uh, uh, I think I might be avoiding him this week. Well, Top Rope, he's not convinced, Marco. What did what did you like about what the Chiefs were doing compared to in previous weeks? Well, I think I think the improvement's probably come from the other side of the ball. I think the defence has, has shown probably the improvement where it's led. They've been... Couldn't really stop anyone early in the season. Uh, I think they were ranked pretty much out the bottom end, maybe 29th, even... Bad as 32nd in the list at one stage. Now they're back down to 12th on the defense side of the ball. So I think that's where it's more started. And that's maybe taken some of the pressure off Mahomes and the offs, off offense that they don't have to score and put up the numbers to stay in the game. I think the defense have been keeping them more, more in the game and being able to relax the offense. Uh, I'm also a bit with the top rope consensus. I'm, I'm not convinced. I think they've got a toughish draw. They've got to play some very good defenses in the run home. Um, that, I mean, they should make the playoffs, but I'm just they'll be at the bottom end. I think they've got hard work to go all the way this year. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see, can they maintain that momentum that it seemed like they pick up against the Raiders last week? Now, to another team that seems like they've lost a little bit of momentum now, Top Row, but seems on the back of, if my memory serves correctly, after the bye, that Tom Brady and the Bucks have had a couple of losses now. Where where do you sit on on the uh, the Bucks at the moment? Yeah, what, what what's happened with Tom Brady, which kind of uh, I think, you know, is 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 kind of probably a long term concern for the Bucks, but probably is certainly the short term. Is he, he he just doesn't seem to perform when he doesn't have his kind of typical safety nets there. Uh, yeah, he, he the, the players he seems to trust the most are Antonio Brown and Rob Gronkowski. Their absences and when they have been on the field, kind of beset by injury, I think has really kind of impacted how the Bucks are playing a bit lately. Uh, that was a really, really, really bad loss. And, yeah, the other concerning thing is on the defensive side of the ball, yeah, Washington put that game to bed on the back of a 10-minute drive. Brady was on the field for 20 minutes there. So, you know, that, 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 that's a concern for, for the Bucs and, you know, uh, Vita Vea uh, uh, on the sideline now as well. So, um, yeah, a few worries about the, the, the Bucs. I think they claim to be the kind of clear favourite in the, in the relatively weak NFC Maybe a little bit under siege from a few of the teams uh, on that side of the uh, the bracket. Marco, where do you, where do you sit with the Bucks? I, I sort of tend to 
think that, uh, look, Tom Brady knows how to get the job done, especially coming into this back end of the season. Like, do we do we need Antonio Brown and Gronk back in order to make a, a really good call on where the Bucks are at? Yes, yeah, he needs his weapons back. But I think we've uh, we've known for long enough now that uh, to uh, pot Brady, um, you know, you do it your your own distress. I think, but no, I I'm not too worried that about. Wise. Oh, yeah, well, history will show you not. You, Quick way to go broke is to pot the champs, but <laughs> they've got uh, they've got all the pieces they need. They just don't have them all on the park fire at the moment. A bit like KFC, uh, KC, sorry, they I guess had a little form slump. Maybe Tampa Bay. They've they got a chance on Monday night to uh, to play the Giants to uh, get back on track. And uh, you know I'm not too concerned at this stage. Yeah, the draw is very kind to them, giving them what would seem an easy kill on uh, Monday night football now. Now, Marco, I'm going to go to a topic that's very near and dear to your heart. I, I've put it under the category death, taxes, and patriots. I just think nothing, you, enough words can't be spoken about the amazing system and culture of the New England Patriots. And I know in America this week, and, and quite rightfully so, Mac Jones um, just seems to be staying in his lane and they create plays that seem not make that many mistakes at the moment. What, what were your thoughts? Because they were unbelievable in that 45-7 to route against the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, Corey, just going nicely. They, you know, they've probably had uh, a, a little soft part of the draw as well that's helped them. Um, but, you know, you, you can only beat who you, who you play against and it's more the way they're going about it. They're very balanced, both sides of the ball. Um, yeah, Mac Jones, is, he's getting the press. He was always going to get the press whether they went above expectations or below this year. And at the moment, he's, uh, you know, slow out of the gates, probably finding his feet and just with the system and stuff. But the last month's been very good. And I think it's more throws to, as you said, it's more the, the culture of the Patriots and it definitely falls to the coach. He, he, he would just be guiding Mac Jones to do, as you said, stay in his lane, do the job. And it's just not about yourself. It, it, the team will uh, support you and get the job done. And, uh, yeah, now they're applying the pressure to uh, to the Bills in the division. Many thought that was cut and dry. Now not so much. And top rope, what's, what's grabbed your eye as far as the Patriots and what, what they're doing? Like they're obviously very impressive on the weekend against the Browns, who once again, boys, when it comes to a big game, they just go missing. Um, I've been very critical of, of them not being able to step up under, when they have the spotlight and need a performance to to step up. Once again, they'll found wanting. But top rope, what are, what are, you, what are your thoughts on where you see the Patriots are really at at the moment? Yeah, I think the Patriots are, are, are legitimate legitimate contenders here. Obviously, Bill Belichick side has to be kind of put in that that realm. Probably not the, the top echelon of teams, but they're so well coached. And like you said, Corey, like, I, I got sucking into the Browns last week. I was, yeah, felt like a fool come about 10 minutes into that game. But, stupid. Uh, stupid mistake, yeah, Stupid, Tom, right? stupid, stupid. And one, one, one I won't be making again in the near future, that's for sure. Uh, but obviously, Mac Jones is, you know, a very, very stable quarterback. And, yeah, I'm certainly not comparing him to, to what Tom Brady's achieved, but he certainly has that quality of players getting around him, players listening to him. And he's kind of not making mistakes, body on the line, doing what needs to be done, right? And he's not being asked to do an insane amount, which is which is wonderful. But where they're really succeeding is on the defensive side of the ball. Cleveland just got nothing going last week, absolutely nothing going. Yeah, they're, 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 they're maybe not the best, the, the, the team full of the most stars, but they're, they're right up there with one of the best teams in, in the competition. They've got depth everywhere, depth across the defence. So... Uh, I think they've given it Stefan Gilmore early in the year and not miss a beat. It says plenty. So uh, I think the Patriots are humming on the probably just where Bill Belichick likes them, just under the radar. Yep, and a bit like uh, Mark Cummings, I think. He knows the right time of year to get the horses in the right spot. And uh, if there's one person you don't want to bet against, it would be Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. Now, one of the great, I, th- I thought one of the great feel-good stories of the week um, sometimes these don't end in the right way, but Cam Newton was back for Carolina and, and didn't, weren't they just a completely transformed team? They they look fantastic, Marco. Yeah, very impressive. Um, yeah, I, I like the way Carolina went about it, actually. I know they uh missing the quarterback on Arizona's side of the offense, but uh, back on the back of their defense as well, you know, it's amazing as we go into deeper in the year that the the sides you want to be on and follow and probably got the better chances at the end of the year 
uh, are the ones that the, the defences are standing up, taking the pressure off the offence, and and that's what happened with Carolina. They were able to do the job. Uh, Newton, unbelievable, just to step right back in and basically get the job done. One it was was good to see, and uh, I'm looking forward. To, I think it'll continue, and uh, I'm really strong on them this week as well. I think they'll get the job done with Newton starting. And top rope, when you see their their fixture coming up, they can all of a sudden they uh they can really put themselves in a pretty strong position. Yeah, they kind of put themselves in a good position over that first month of the season when they probably overachieved. And now they can really build on that. Enough. Yeah, had they kind of been you know, one and eight, you know, something like that at this stage, I'm not entirely sure they would have gone after Cam Newton. But because they were in contention, they've gone after Cam. Look, he did join the team later in the week. The fact he played it all, you know, was even active, was a surprise, I think, to many. And then to kind of be involved in two touchdowns, you know, as you said, he's back, baby. The good and the bad, the, the touchdowns, the goal line threats, the stupid penalties. So uh, everything Cam Newton is, is back in action with Carolina. Uh, look, the, the bottom of the NC is wide, wide open. So uh, yeah, seven playoff teams again this year, of course. So uh, Panthers definitely not out of this. And yeah, I, I think they probably will make themselves into a, a give themselves a playoff chance. Uh, sorry, Corey, they can set it up really in the next couple of weeks with the draw, as you said, being really soft. Uh, got Washington, Miami, and Atlanta the next three. So you think if they could string those together, all of a sudden they could turn eight and five with uh, a month to go of football. And Marco, look, the uh, to, to wrap it all up, Monday Night Football, we had the San Francisco 49 as well. You probably knew that they were, they were on from the start of the game. But amazingly, they snapped an eight-game losing streak at home, which you would never have thought for... I mean, for San Francisco, such a strong franchise to lose eight games at home, but they were brilliant, weren't they? Yeah, as good as they were, as probably as poor as uh, the Rams were as well. Their their defense was unbelievable. They just, uh, well, they probably their overall game plan. I thought was very impressive the way they just ran the rock. Um, what was it? Uh, the drive early where they put uh, eighteen plays together um, before the interception. I think it was that that set the tone for the game. And the Rams just couldn't adjust. They had no plan B. And, um, you know, I think their coach is going to have to, for the Rams side of it, they're going to have to go away and, and readdress their side of it. Um, but, yeah, the 49ers were strong, as you said, snapped eight-game home losing streak. Uh, they're probably a bit far back for this year, but they might come on strong with a few players back this year. I, th- I think they might upset a few teams looking for playoffs, especially in their own division, which is obviously tough. And, Top Road, we're, we're, I think we're all being seduced by the fact of the Rams are already great. You know, well, they're already pretty good when we had Matt Stafford going there. Already had, you know, I mean, Donald and these sorts of guys that are there. But when you had Von Miller, Odell Beckham, where where do you see what's the next step forward of what the Rams like? It's like they need to just rediscover their mojo in terms of having these new players in the, in their system. Yeah, they, they seem to be more about uh, more about talent acquisition than building a team. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they really know how to use Von Miller. Not like he's only been there. But whether he was entirely necessary, I'm not sure. Who wasn't necessary, even with the injury of Robert Woods, uh, was was Odell Beckham. Like he 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 may provide something sure, but he's absolutely not the player that the Rams require. They had they had a, probably a better version of him these days in in Van Jefferson. Now what they need is a Robert Woods, a, a wide receiver who can play inside and out. Who can block? Yeah, he's the best white, best blocking wide receiver in the NFL, Robert Woods. So I, I, I don't think his loss can be underestimated. They were at a loss without him. He was the he's the safety valve. They play through underneath. He can go deep. He, he's everything to them, Robert Woods. So I, look, I, I thought the Rams were a touch overrated at the start of the year. I think they're, they're, what they are really good at is humiliating bad teams. They, they really they really get stunned by 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 a, a bad team, but. Yeah, I guess the better teams. I'm not sure. I think Matt, Matthew Stafford's kind of getting found out a little bit. Like he missed some throws on the week that, yeah, he should have made. That's sort of the mechanic for some of the, the shocking third down drops we saw from like Tyler Higby. So, uh, yeah, I, I think there's the, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm just not convinced about the Rams. I certainly don't kind of have them in my top echelon of teams in, in the NFC, that's for sure. Well, that's it for a big front page news. Next, we will take it to the house. Welcome back. It's time now for To The House, brought to you by topsport.com.au, family owned and operated for 35 years. Bet with a bookie you can trust. Bet with topsport.com.au. And Marco, take it to the house. 
Thanks, Corey. Before we bring our man Top Rope in, uh, we will just quickly go over the graphics. Uh, Top Rope, we went 3-2 and two last week with his five selections, taking his season tally now to 27-25 and 25 on his lines and totals. Uh, we'll just do the quick bookie wrap from week 10 where we saw uh, the favourites ran even, uh, same with the home teams, and again, both the... Uh, the outsiders and the under totals continue to uh, dominate. As you can see on the season now, favourites under 60% for the year, covering the lines of only 42%, and the unders are winning at 56%. The home teams are about 50-50, so it's hard yakka if you're on the favourites, and especially for multi-punters this year, um, you're having a tough time of it. We'll get on to uh, Top Rope's uh, results quickly for from week 10. He had five selections again, as you can see. Uh, started off uh, missing on the total in the Dallas game uh, and then got his act together on the unders. Uh, just getting home in the Carolina-Arizona by uh, half a point there, Top Rope. We'll discuss that, whether he got lucky or not. Easily in the uh, Seattle Green Bay, uh, unfortunately nowhere near it in the Vegas and then come home strong. Anyone who followed chips all in on the uh, Tuesday afternoon game, he got the under total after again looking shaky early there, top rope. As I bring you in, how did you go uh, for week 10? Yeah, uh, a little bit lucky, a little bit unlucky. So probably evened out and probably about the right result there. Probably summed up the week, to be honest. Uh, uh, the Panthers game was probably pretty lucky. The Dallas game you know, had all the hallmarks of going over Dallas, but they put on 35 by half time. So, uh, Shouldn't have been much more to get there, but Atlanta's inability to score really put that one to bed. So, uh, oh, well, you win some, you lose some, but uh, uh, good week for uh, dogs, good week for unders, so good week for top row. Yeah, solid winning week. Okay, we'll quickly move on now to week 11. We'll keep the run going here for Mr. Top Rope. Uh, first game on Friday afternoon on uh, 12.20 start here on ESPN. We've got uh, my New England Patriots travelling to play Atlanta. Uh, the Patriots' strong favourite here, top rope, line of seven. There's been some early money for them and a total of 48. Also, money for the over at this stage. Uh, beliefs growing in Pats land. We've touched on that earlier in uh, front page news, how the Pats are going. Four straight wins now. Absolutely dominated the Browns last week. Um, now travel to Atlanta, uh, who coming off a belting by their own admission with uh, Dallas, they got smashed three to forty-three. So two teams maybe going in the opposite directions. Top rope, how do you see it? Yeah, uh, what about New England here? Uh, this is a pretty good spot for them. They've covered twenty-six of thirty-six against teams with a losing record, and they're twenty-one eight against the number of a win of fourteen plus. They tend to hold form. They tend to beat teams that are, are pretty ordinary. Uh, Atlanta are quite clearly pretty ordinary. So. Uh, yeah, I'll be jumping all over the Pats uh, minus seven uh, this week. Okay, the favourites there for top rope. Corey, do you see this one any different? No, I think your boys, Marco, they're on a pretty good roll at the moment. Though I'll take that with a pinch of salt because our, my punting has been terrible. Um, but no, look, I think with the Pats, with the six off best offence and second best defence up against Atlanta, 25th and 31st in defence, that pretty much says it all. So... I think your boys keep rolling on. I like your thoughts there, both of you. Okay, match two, we move into the Monday games here. The early one at 5 a.m. This one will be seen on 7, mate. We've got uh, your boys, Corey, the Colts, travelling to Buffalo to take on the Bills there. Bills, home favourite, minus seven and a half the line, total of 50 flat at this stage. Uh, top rope, one of the better matchups for the week here on paper. Um, Indianapolis going okay. They've had two uh, straight wins now. Uh, travel to Buffalo, who obviously took care of the Jets last week. Um, for mine, Indianapolis have probably beaten weaker sides this year and struggled against the better sides, while the Bills have uh, they've dominated, actually. They've had six good wins, all above 15 points. So how do you see uh, this matchup on Monday morning? Yeah, tough, tough game to assess this one from a side point of view. Now, I went into a thing, and the line was maybe a touch big, but... Like you said, Buffalo can really put teams to the sword, and they've covered 13 of 16 off scoring 30 plus. One bet I do like, though, is the over 50. It's already shot up from uh, uh, opening at 49. Uh, the Colts, uh, the over is 8 and 3 when they're off a win, 4 and 1 when they're a dog. Uh, 16 and 6 from Buffalo are off a win, so uh, very keen on the over in this one. Hey, plenty of points there for top rope. Corey, will your Colts score enough to cause the upset here? I wouldn't think so, Marco. No, um, look, it's we never know what version of Carson Wentz is going to turn up. As we said, and I've texted you during games, he always manages 
at least once a week when he's got 47 blokes hanging off him and switch to his opposite hand and then try and throw a, a pass that leaves your heart in your mouth. But look, I, I think they've got to stick to this option and whether Carson Wentz will do that, if, um, Taylor's been on fire. Um, so the more you give him the ball, the better we tend to look. Uh, but I don't think it'll be enough for our boys to go in the Indy. This is the season on the line. So who knows, this could kickstart their season, but I just probably can't see them doing enough to get over Buffalo in Buffalo. Fair enough. Well, I'm looking forward to it anyway, and top rope's tipping the over points, so it should be a good game to watch. Okay, match three we'll move on to here. Green Bay travel to Minnesota, uh, also a 5 a.m. game. This will be on ESPN. Uh, Green Bay are the away favourites here, line of two and a half and a total at 49 and a half. Uh, top rope, I like this game. This kind of sets up really nicely. Green Bay are now eight and two and got a pretty good road record. Uh, for the Vikings, even though they've got a four and five record, they've lost a lot of close games. Actually, eight of their nine games this year by seven points or less. So what are the chances of Minnesota causing a mini upset at home? Yeah, don't really like Minnesota this game. You know, I've kind of ridden Minnesota quite a bit this year, to be honest. I think they probably have been a bit undervalued by the market, but they've covered just one of their last eight at home, one of their last six off a win. Uh, Packers have covered 10 of 11 off a win, six straight as a favourite, five of their last seven as a road favourite. Uh, they've won eight straight with Aaron Rodgers, uh, a quarterback. So, of course, that last loss was with Jordan Love there. Uh, he was not bad. And the team didn't perform too badly when he was off a very. I don't think he practiced with them at all last week. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be taking the class of Rogers and the Packers this one. Okay, Packers there for top rope, Corey. Uh, can you see Minnesota getting it done, or will Rogers and the Packers roll on? I think one thing that we can guarantee that, given it Minnesota is involved, that they've just been amazing this year with how many close games they've had. But uh, look, I, I think. Look, even last week, uh, Green Bay were a little bit scratchy. More importantly, Aaron Rodgers, after the week off, um, sitting at home doing yoga while he was doing uh, under COVID protocol. But um, I think with a week of practice and him coming back in, I think he'd win this game once again in a close one. Okay, just a note there for uh, Green Bay punters, Aaron Jones is probably out for at least maybe two weeks there. So uh, that might upset the rhythm of the Packers. Okay, we move on to the third game, which is match four of the 5 a.m. games. And we see here we've got the New Orleans Saints travel to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. Uh, close betting game here. Top rope, we've got the home favourite by one and a half at the line. Uh, lowish total here of 43 flat. Uh, an interesting game here they're both close uh in terms of win loss ratios this year and philadelphia coming off a very impressive denver win last week of 30 to 13 so um how do you see this match shaping up here top rope yeah i'm not sure the lines makers this one have seen uh, jalen hurts play football uh, so, <laughs> for last week so that, uh, i'm stunned that uh philadelphia are favorites this one i know trevor simeon is uh quarterbacking the saints but uh they have a huge edge in coaching. They have a huge edge in defence. Uh, and you know what? Like the, the Kamara, uh, not there. They've still got plenty of weapons there, the, 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 the Saints. But also, this is a great spot for them. They've covered 24 of 32 as a road dog. They've covered 11 in the last 16 as the losing team. Eagles covered just three of their last 11 as a favourite all over New Orleans this week, almost close to the best of the week. Jeez, okay, best of the week. Can I just ask you about the total in this game, Top Have you got any thoughts? I actually thought the total was very low, but I've seen – well, not very low, but I thought it was low side, and it's already dropped from 44 to 43. I like the over in this game. Did you have any opinion on that? I do. I like the under. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Eagles 14-5 uh, under at home. Uh, uh, very sharp. The, uh, the Saints, obviously, they're, they're, they're going to try and win this uh, on, on the defense with uh, – uh, with, with so many injuries on offense, so uh, yeah, look, I'm not, I'm not hugely confident. I wouldn't wouldn't be pushing to steer you out of it too much, MG. But uh, I'll be having something small in the under. Sounds like a side bet coming up there, top rope. Obviously, your money's already gone on early moving the market there. Not teeing one up again for him. Okay, Corey, how do you see this match, uh, Saints in Philly? Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I tend to agree with top rope. I, I do like the under as well, especially. Look, Jalen Hurts, uh, and again, I know in our notes we're saying who do we we trust more out of the two the two quarterbacks. I'm only just leaning towards the the Eagles, but they're up against a, a pretty strong 
Saints defense and, and any time at time you go up against the the Saints, it's always a tough battle. But I'm only just leaning towards the Eagles in this one. Very good there, Corey. Okay, no support for uh, MG there for the uh, over total. So <laughs> you're on your own. Uh, wish Paige was here to give me some support, but anyway, we're out had a host to ask here. So we'll move on to the next game Monday morning at eight twenty-five a.m. This will be seen on ESPN. Uh, like this one here, this will be match of the week, I think. Uh, Dallas travelling to take on the Chiefs here. Uh, the line is the Chiefs at minus two flat and a high total here of 56 flat. Um, what have we got here, top rope? We've we've talked a bit about the Chiefs. We've obviously talked about Dallas. Uh, the Chiefs have now won three in a row. This would be huge for Dallas going in to uh, beat the Chiefs. How do you see it? Yeah, flagged this earlier, but uh, very, very keen on uh, Dallas in this one. They've covered eight of their last nine overall, five straight as a dog. I'm just, I'm just not convinced about Kansas City. I'm, I'm probably not taking too much out of that game uh, that we know with the, the Raiders. They've still just covered five of their last 20 as a favourite. You know, I, I think they need to show a bit more from my point of view. I think there'll be plenty of points there, but Dallas could run all day. So they've got offensive weapons that are going to, that are going to cause absolute fit for a pretty fragile uh, Kansas City defence. So, well, Kansas City could put 42 up this week. I'm not sure it'll be enough. So uh, I think it's going to be a very high-scoring game, and I'm very keen on Dallas this week. Okay, be a good test for the uh, KC, the improving KC defence, if they can hold Dallas and get the W here. Corey, uh, have you got a different opinion here? Uh, look, it's... Yeah, easily the game of the week for mine and, and can really tell a story about where each franchise goes uh, for the rest of the season. Like if Kansas City are really back, will they want to get a big scalp in Dallas and then Dallas on the flip side, if they're going to go on and do some pretty special things this year, will they want to go into places like Kansas City and get a win? I would think, I'm, I'm a bit like top rope, I, whilst they're back a little bit, the Kansas City Chiefs, I just feel like on both sides of the ball that Dallas are doing a lot of things right, especially after that that bit of a, a, a bad loss uh, against the Broncos the week before. They did everything right last week, and I'm, I'm thinking they're going to do the same thing again going into Kansas City. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be talking about it the week after for the winner and the loser of this matchup. It's got uh, big ramifications going forward. Okay, the second of the uh, middle tier games at eight twenty-five. This one will be shown on seven, mate. We see uh, the eight and two Arizona travel to Seattle, and we've got an away favourite again here. Arizona are favourites at minus two and a half, and the total is at forty-nine flat. Top rope divisional matchup. Um, they seem wide apart here. Seattle have lost four out of five with the only win coming against the lowly Jacksonville. Even though Arizona have got uh, a long injury list, um, they should get the job done over Seattle here who got shut out against Green Bay. Yeah, not convinced about that. Uh, I, I, you know, this is a big, big spot for Seattle here. They were, uh, to, to be frank, embarrassed in Green Bay last week. Probably plenty going on there, but yeah, I'd, I'd probably lean towards Seattle getting the points on, on home turf here, but not a huge amount of confidence. One bet I am confident on that. Very, very, very keen on the under in this one. Uh, big total here, but uh, the under is hitting 15 of the last 18 Seattle games, including 10 of 11 when they're off a loss, six straight as an underdog. And it is 10 3 when Arizona are on the road, 7 0 when they're a road favourite. So, uh, yeah, give me the under in the big total here. Very confident. Yeah, like that spot there, top row. I think Seattle have only had one game this year where they've gone over the total, so they're a big under team as well in uh, season 2021. How do you see this one, Corey? Yeah, I think Seattle will get it back on track. I think Russell Wilson last week, especially coming back after a hand injury, it was obviously very rusty. It was super cold going into to Green Bay. Um, I just think after another week's practice, They'll improve their their home record. They're one and three. I know Arizona are five and zip on the road, but I would think Seattle will, will return to winning ways and uh, question marks for Arizona. All right, again, probably a big big uh, spot for next week to talk about the winner and loser, especially if uh, Arizona do not get the W in that game. Okay, we're going on to our seventh game that we're covering this week. We've got Pittsburgh going in to play the Chargers. Currently, there's no betting uh, at Top Sports just because we've had a late, uh, well, the announcement that Ben Rothenberg is not going to be the quarterback. 
for Pittsburgh. They're going with Rodolf, who played last week. So the betting bef- uh, that we can see is the Chargers will be favoured at minus five. Total of around the 47 mark here, top rope. How do you see this game? Yep, keen on Pittsburgh. Very keen on the under best of the week, the under in this one. Uh, ben missing is of zero relevance to me. I, I don't think it matters uh, whatsoever to what uh, uh, Pittsburgh are doing. Mason Rudolph, yeah, the, the, the stats numbers, there's just very statistically very little difference between the two. So, um, look, that says more about where Ben's at in his career rather than where, you know, what kind of quarter Mason Rudolph's at. But, yeah, I, I just, I, I'm a little unconvinced by what the Chargers are, are, are offering at the moment. They've kind of faded in some big spots. You know, the Steelers have covered nine in their last 26 as a road underdog. They're very, very good under Tomlin when their the backs are against the wall. Uh, the Chargers, five and 13 against the number as a home favourite. Best play here, though, is the under. Just, yeah, obviously, uh, uh, Pittsburgh are just a run and defend team. They're 25 and 10 under as a dog, 43 and 13 under on the road, 9 and 2 under as a road underdog. And when the Chargers are home favourite, 6 and 2 under here. So, uh, yeah, I love the under in this one. Yeah, I should have teed that under up for you, the top rope. Might have got some support there. Okay, you're, cool. you're, 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 you're a bit stiff, to be fair, MG. You could have teed an under up in nearly every game, and I would have been on. I oh, know. I just got to mix it up, top row. We can't all agree all the time. Okay, Corey, what have we got here? We've got um, the Chargers started the season on fire, getting to four and one, and they're really uh, they're struggling. I'm not saying the wheels are coming off, but uh, if they can't beat Pittsburgh in this game, then uh, the postseason might be in doubt for them. How do you see it? Yeah, this is another team with a. There's a lot of must win uh, games in this round, isn't there? And I, look, I, I think Justin Herbert and the Chargers, they will get the scalp they need to to keep pace in that tough division with Kansas City. So um, whilst I know Top Rope doesn't make a lot of valid points, I do agree with it, I think the Chargers <laughs> at home. Jeez, what about that from a whack? Wow. All right, very good. All right, so big play there for Top Rope on the unders. Uh, the stats point that way, and the, we'll see how the uh, the total goes there for next week. Okay, our last match, which will be seen here on Tuesday afternoon now at 15 on ESPN, uh, not the best Monday night or Tuesday for us match that we've seen this year, unfortunately. We've had a few potential shockers. We've got the Giants off the bye travelling to Tampa Bay. We've got very strong favourites here, Tampa Bay, minus 11.5, total of 49.5. Um, this was going to be a complete mismatch, I would have thought, about a fortnight or so ago, top rope. Um, New York Giants managed to get a win before the bye. Now they're coming off the bye, hopefully freshened up a little. Tampa Bay since have lost two straight. So this could have been a potentially uh, maybe a 17 or more line now back to 11 and a half. How do you see this one? Yeah, the, the most underrated team on the road in the NFL is the New York Giants. So they look ugly, they play ugly. It's, yeah, if there's one team you could put in the bin and just not watch any, not watch on red zone at all, it would be the New York Giants. But they have covered 21 of 27 on the road. So I do tend to be undervalued there. I'll, I'll be leaning towards the plus. Not a great deal of confidence that the, the, the the two straight losses have probably spurred Tampa Bay into a bit of action here. So uh, not going over the top. But I, I, another game where I really like the under in this one, the Giants have gone under in 19 of 26, don't have a lot of offence. Uh, Tampa Bay have gone under in four straight off a loss. So uh, it'll depend on the weapons that, uh, that Brady has his disposal this week, but I, I don't think there's going to be a lot of points there. Tampa Bay seem to be lacking a bit of rhythm at the moment, and the Giants, well, they just lack rhythm permanently. So. Okay, for Tuesday morning punters, Corey, what have you got for us? Give us something of a bit more strength here. No, can't give you anything, Mark. The top row <laughs> has <laughs> already <laughs> said. <laughs> no, look, I, I think Monday night football, we all we all know that Tom's really good at um, coming up with narratives and stories, and there's no bigger than playing Monday night football, knowing that Eli and Peyton will be picking apart every single play that he's actually doing. So... I would think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would do this very comfortably. Very good. Okay, that's the eight te- televised games that we've got this week. If you like what you hear, especially from the top rope side of it, uh, can you please get a- along to Little Birdie Pod, go to To The House in the shop, and you can pick it up for $22 a week. He has detailed information on all games. Uh, if you're serious about your NFL punting, make sure you get that information before you bet. Okay, Next, we're going to just have a quick look at and bring in both gents again for comments on the Super Bowl prices as we update the uh, betting there. And this could not get much more wide open at the moment. We we kind of tipped this as the season was going on. We I think 
Maybe the favourite started around five fifty six dollars at the start of the year. We didn't think uh, any favourite would would get under around the four dollar mark. As you can see now, we've got seven dollars the field, um, and the favourites keep changing here. So at the top, we've currently got the Bills at seven dollars, the Bucks at seven twenty five, the Rams who were shown up on uh, yes uh, Monday Night Football at eight twenty five, the Packers nine twenty five. The Chiefs have now come in on a couple of wins into nine fifty. Uh, the Cardinals at nine seventy five. Dallas Cowboys at eleven dollars and the Titans are at twelve dollars. Top rope first. Uh, what are we seeing here? If you're having one bet for the weekend on the Super Bowl, uh, if I'm having one bet for the Super Bowl, probably jumping into Tampa Bay on, on, on those prices. They're kind of getting out to a, a, a bettable price. I, to be honest, I'm probably not backing anyone on that front page. But uh, um, yeah, I, I think kind of. You know, Tampa Bay are probably you know, they do go to eleven point favourites here. They put a number on them, they'll be clear out of favourites. There's just no way Buffalo should be should be favoured in this market at all for mine. So uh I'll probably jump into Tampa Bay, but not a lot on that first page to, to excite me, MJ. Okay. Corey, any thoughts on the Super Bowl if you're having a bet this week for punters? Yeah, the one that's surprising is Buffalo being uh favourite. I think the one that seems a little bit of value there could be the Dal- uh, Pages Dallas Cowboys, I think. Um, but, yeah, look, I, look, I, I think in the coming weeks you're really going to see, yeah, where everything sorts out. And by the time we get to middle of December, we're going to, I think, to be able to build a much stronger case as, as to who really should be the favourite for the Super Bowl. Okay. All right. Some different thoughts there from the gents. Okay. We'll just uh... – Coming up now, we're going to go through what uh, our best bets of the week are. So I'll throw to Corey and he can introduce our um, betting for this week. Well, each week our panel of four will be and have been granted $100 to invest. Sponsored by topsport.com.au. Topsport is Australia's biggest betting bookie. Bet you didn't know that. Where Bet where the pros get set. All profits are donated to my platform called Walk With Me Online where we're doing awesome things in the physical and mental fitness space. Now, Marco, take it away and let me know, am I still on track or not? Well, yes, we haven't heard from you for a fortnight. You were 8-0 and, and all we heard on the chats and all your socials and stuff is how you were going. You were renaming yourself every week, 6-0, and 7-0, 8-0. Oh, I was, was the goat. It was the you, goat, you, I was saying. straight to the goat, all right. Uh, top rope was getting a bit nervous. Uh, I think he'd laid a bet at some stage whether you'd gone 10-0. He might have had to lose his hair, I think, was the rumour going around. So you gave him a bit of a sweat. But the last two weeks you've come back to earth. Unfortunately, I uh, hope for the punters haven't jumped on you at the 8-0 and been disappointed the last two weeks. But as we check the graphic for Week 10's results, we, uh, Corey, some reasonable news. We went two out of four. Um, myself and uh, Top Rope getting a win on the board. So unfortunately, Corey's now gone to eight and two. Uh, he'll lift for this week as Top Rope starts to put a bit of, pre- bit of pressure on him here at five and five. You can see him closing the gap and uh, I'm going to try and catch Paige and lower this gap. So you can see for Corey's uh, walk with me online, we're up to $1,900 for his platform at the end of the year. We're hoping, I'm, I'm hoping around the 4K is our, our um, predicted ba- bank balance. As we move into week 11, I'll throw to you top rope first. Actually, I better throw to Corey first because he's still the leader. I don't want to upset the yeah, man. You should. You should. Uh, what have you got? What have you got for us as a special here? We don't want you losing three in a row. No, won't be losing three in a row. I've gone uh, the charges at minus five and a half. So. That will get me to nine and two, Marco. I like the confidence there. Top rope, what have we got? Big game for uh, uh, for our followers uh, team. I've got on the under in that game, under 47, I think it is. Uh, uh, Steelers at Chargers. Yes, you have. Double investment there. Interesting. Okay. Paige, who's uh, not with us at the moment, she's going to keep going with her 49ers at the line of minus six. And uh, anyone following me, uh, Carolina minus three and a half for myself here. So uh, they're the picks for this week. And hopefully we can uh, get more than two out of four. As uh, Corey, you can tell us about the uh, Super Bowl winner and the competition. Well, thanks, Marco. Well, you can join us at our third and long Super Bowl party by getting involved in our Super Bowl party competition. Now, last week's winner, we had Nick James. He correctly tipped Miami by three points. That was the closest margin in Miami won, 22 to 10 versus Baltimore. Now, this week's match, 12-20 game, the New England Patriots versus the Atlanta Falcons. 
now how you can enter and how you can have a beer with Marco, which I'm sure you are very, very excited about. Each week, the first game, which is that's the first game this week, pick the margin, as what happened last week on our socials, on Twitter or Instagram at Little Birdie TV and Third and Long TV. To qualify, you must tag at least two friends and one entry per person per week. If multi-entries are the same, we'll select the same score. And third and long, we'll select one random entry. So that's how you can join us at the Super Bowl party on Marco. What date is it? Monday, February the 13th, I think. Yep. Yes, we'll have details shortly of uh, where that location is. I think Corey's still trying to wheel and deal his way into it. No, no, I've actually got a venue, but I haven't confirmed it with you, Marco. We'll talk about that off air. Okay, beautiful. If you want to join us, make sure you tag us on Twitter and Instagram. Follow the first game of the week, all those rules I said, and you can join us on Monday, February 13, at our venue to be decided. Well, that's a wrap for another show. Thanks to the third and long crew. Thanks to Top Rope, Marco, Borco, Paige. Even though you're not here, we thank you as well. You can follow us on YouTube. Find us at the Apple Store, Spotify, or SoundCloud, or wherever you listen to your podcast. You can follow us at Little Birdie TV, at Third and Long TV on Twitter and Instagram. And remember, for all your NFL action can be found at topsport.com.au. And remember, invest wisely, punters, and enjoy week 11.